Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and today I would love to share with you how I draft from scratch a super simple one hour top for myself that is also going to be a base for quite a few tutorials in this video series. It's very easy to draft it, it only uses a couple of your measurements and it's a very quick make as well. But with all that I have to tell you right away, this is not a textbook method so it might not be for everybody. But even with all that I still encourage you to grab some old bed sheets, some printer paper, pencil and measuring tape and follow along because listen, if you won't try, you will never know if it works for you or not and I don't know about you but I'd rather regret things that I have done than regret things that I haven't. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. You're watching Easy Sewing DIY, a weekly series where I make a simple pattern, then I sew it and love it. Everything is straightforward so you can make it as well. Tune in for new episodes every weekend. I'm wearing a white t-shirt for you guys so hopefully you can see the measuring tape a little bit better and how I measure myself. And we're gonna start with paper first. And I'm using a printer paper, I'm just gonna tape it together. But you can use whatever else you have at home, a wrong side of gift wrapping paper, a newspaper, use whatever you have, anything will do really. Now how long and how wide it needs to be, very good question. And this is going to be our first set of measurements too. You take your measuring tape, you put it right over here on the neckline right over here. Oops, it has to be flat, okay. And then you drop it all the way down to your tailbone. Once you have your finger on your tailbone, make sure that the measuring tape doesn't move, you take it away and mine is 21 and a half inches. Add a couple of inches to this measurement so that way we'll have a little bit of room to work with and that's how long your pattern is going to be. Now go ahead and mark this length on the paper that you have prepared. In my case, it was 21.5 inches. And then draw two perpendicular lines, just like you see me do in the video. Then mark them top and bottom, so that way we know what we're working with. Now when we talk about the width, it's very simple, it's going to be one quarter of your widest measurement and usually it's either your shoulders, your bust or your hips. Now since we only measured the length from the back of the neckline all the way to your tailbone, you're not going to be measuring your actual hips, you're going to be measuring the hip length around your tailbone. So I know my hips are the widest thing ever, so I'm going to find my tailbone and that's where I'm going to measure it around, right? Because that's how long our pattern is going to be. And mine is 38. I have my finger on that measurement. I take it away, and then I fold it in half, all right? Then I fold it in half one more time. And, or you can just divide it, but I find that this is a little bit easier. So that's how wide it has to be, plus a couple of inches, so that way we have enough room to work with. Now take the length between the top and the bottom and divide it in three equal parts. Now mine was 21 and a half inches, so I'm marking just a little bit over seven inches. Once that is done, draw two perpendicular lines and mark them as bust and waist. Now that we have the top, the bust, the waist, and the bottom line, we have to put coordinating measurements on them. So first, for the top line, we're gonna measure our neck. We're gonna measure them from one bone over here, right, to another bone right over here. So take your measuring tape over here. Once you have your finger on the correct measurement right over here, pull it away, fold it in half, and put it, this measurement on your paper. That's going to be your neck measurement. To measure your bust, you want to make sure that you measure the highest point on your bust. You put your measuring tape around. You want to make sure that your measuring tape doesn't slide back like this. You want to make sure that it's all nice and even around. All right, it's easier if you bring it together up front. So once you have your finger on your measurement, you pull it away, you fold it in half, and you fold it in half again. All right, and that's the measurement that you're gonna go on your, on your bust line. The reason why we only took a half of the neck measurement is because we didn't measure all the way around. The reason why we're taking a quarter of the bust is because we measured all the way around, all right? 
Next measurement on our pattern is your waist measurement. Usually the waistline is the thinnest part of your midriff. However, I measure the waist where my elbow ends because we've just divided our whole length from the back of the neckline to your tailbone in three equal parts. So that's usually the third equal part um, and where it ends. So do you take your measuring tape, you put it around, that's where my elbow ends. You have your finger on your measurement, you pull it away, then you fold it in half and then you fold it in half one more time. Again, quarter because we measured all the way around. And that is gonna go on your waistline. And for the bottom measurement, just like I did to establish how long and how wide we need to have our paper, you're gonna measure your hips, but just where the tailbone is at, right? So you're gonna put it right around your tailbone. You're gonna have your finger right on that measurement. You pull it away, you fold it in half, and then you fold it in half one more time, so quarter. And that is the measurement that's gonna go on the bottom line of your pattern. The last measurement that I need for my pattern is the length of my shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is I take a measuring tape and I start at the bone where I measured my neckline and then I drop it all the way to the point where my shoulder drops. If you have a t-shirt that marks the shoulder seam, that's great, you can use that as a guideline, but you can also visually tell where, where it drops. So once you have that length, you put your finger on that length, you pull it away, and you're gonna be using the full measurement of that. We're not gonna fold it in half or in quarters. This is going to be the full measurement and that's what you're gonna put on your pattern. Hey, we're almost there. Let's put it all together. Now it is time to draft your neckline. Drop about three inches down on the edge of the pattern from the top line and then draw a dashed line from that mark up to the first marking on the top line. Remember that first marking is the half of the width of your neck. Now, take a bowl. If you have a curved ruler, that's great, but if you don't, a bowl or a plate or anything else that's round will do just fine. That will help you to make your neckline a little bit smoother. But also, don't worry about it too much. You can always adjust it, and that's probably one of the easiest parts of the pattern to adjust. To account for the balance of the garment, raise the first marking on the top line by about 7 eighths of an inch, and then drop the shoulder marking by about 7 eighths of an inch as well. Now we have to extend and draw a new neckline. If you feel that the neckline isn't being drawn as nice and smooth, you can always move it to the right by about a quarter of an inch or so. Now draw the line from one to another, and that is going to be your shoulder line. Now we're going to add ease to three of the measurements on this pattern, to the bust line, waistline, and bottom line. Now I will leave the standard ease measurements in the info box below for you guys, but since this is a pretty free falling top, I'm going to add an inch to my bust line, three quarters of an inch to the waistline, and about an inch to the bottom line as well. The large marking is my true measurement, the small marking is the measurement with ease. Now let's talk about an armhole. I'm gonna use a plate to help me with a curved line that I'm going to draw from the edge of the shoulder mark all the way down to the bust line. And please know that here I am dropping it all the way to the bust line measurement with an ease. Now this corner over here needs to be 90 degrees, otherwise it's gonna give us a really ugly triangle shape. And you're just gonna make sure that you're straighten out that angle and draw a new piece of the top of the armhole. Now the bottom line needs to be curved in a little bit more as well, so that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna adjust it by a little bit. So pretty much it's gonna look like the inverted J. Mine didn't come out as pretty as I wanted it to be, so I'm just going to adjust it once I cut out the pattern. Now onto the side seam. Since my bust and my bottom measurements are definitely larger than my waist measurements, I'm just gonna drop a straight line from bust towards the bottom, and that is going to create an A-line pattern. Alrighty, I'm almost ready to do my happy dance. So the front part of the pattern is actually ready. Now we just have to draft the back part, which only has two differences from the front part. And that's the reason we're gonna draft it all in one. So since we talked about the balance of the garment, we're gonna bring down the shoulder seam by about 3 eighths of an inch. And we're gonna draw a new shoulder line for the back of the pattern. Now when it comes to the neckline, you're gonna raise the neckline by about an inch and a half. And of course you can always adjust it because as I mentioned, that's probably one of the easiest parts of the pattern to adjust. 
And that's it, you just have to cut it out and it's ready to be made into a whole bunch of beautiful handmade items. Now here's a few things. This pattern does not include seam allowances, so if you would like to add some, you can do it right before you cut your pattern out, or in my case, I do not like seam allowances to be marked on the pattern, so I add them as I go when I actually cut into the fabric. Here's another thing, you can always transfer this pattern onto another piece of paper, so that way you have the front and the back of the same pattern. However, in my case, and again, totally my preference, I like to have just one pattern piece, and in order for me to make sure that my shoulder seems a little bit different for the top and the front, I just fold that little shoulder piece on itself whenever I trace the back of the pattern. So now you can play around with this pattern and just have fun. You can make it shorter, you can adjust the sleeve, you can rework the neckline, just have some fun, use your imagination and make a whole bunch of beautiful things. Now here I would like to mention one more time that this is a non-traditional way of drafting a pattern, but it helped me so much in order to understand how my body works in terms of dressmaking and it definitely makes a beautiful top. So I really hope that you give it a try and if it works for you, that is fantastic. It's going to make Make my day. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy sewing and happy drafting.